Hey guys, this is Jose from Patrick and Friends Music Company. Um, I uh, am your bass instructor. Today we will be talking about the upright bass. This uh, is what some people call the big violin, the big cello, um, what's that big instrument you have, you know, that kind of stuff. The upright is uh, composed of four strings. Uh, the sixth string usually, or the, uh, the electric bass, sorry, um, is usually between four, five, six, it goes up to 12, some have 24, but the upright usually will only go up to the five string, but most commonly is always four strings. Uh, the thinnest string being the G string. The string after that, the second thickest is the D string. After that is the A. And then the lowest, the E string. All right, so when you play them all, You get this uh, beautiful uh, sound of a whole bunch of fifths stacked up. All right, so the string spacing, the intervals is, uh, it's, they're all fifths. It's all separated by fifths or fourths if you're going down. If you're going from G to D, that is a fifth. D to A, that's a fifth. A to E is a fifth. And if you go the other way, those are fourths. This big piece of uh, wood that you have here, uh, this is actually called the bridge. It is, uh, it's an arched bridge, so it gives you uh, kind of like a roundness on the strings, um, and it helps give that support, and it helps really actually produce a lot of the sound, which is not glued actually. Um, and then that kind of puts pressure on the strings, and with the, uh, the pressure from the strings and the bridge, um, holds the sound post that is inside, which actually is what really holds a lot of the bass together. So let's go ahead and get started with, uh, you know, understanding the bass a little bit. So you notice that there are actually no frets, contrary to an electric guitar or an electric bass that is lined up with like uh, little metal pieces of wire that kind of tell you what the, you know, the fret spacing is. An upright bass is just a solid fingerboard. There is no frets, there's nothing to really guide you other than what we know as positions. The positions, knowing and understanding positions will help guide you through the bass um, in terms of what notes you're gonna be playing, where the notes are located, um, and all that stuff. If you play electric or you are kind of familiar with electric, it's sort of the same concept uh, in terms of where the notes are at, but with a slightly bigger spacing, just because it's, you know, the neck is this big. Um, it's a lot bigger instrument. So. Uh, the first uh, little thing right here, this little section is called the half space, really. Uh, and that's where you have your F, B flat, E flat, and A flat, all right? So that's your half position. Right next to it, half step, you have A, E, B, and F sharp, all right? And then, vice, you know, you go chromatically, then you have G, C, F, and B flat. You go chromatic again, now you have B, and this is actually called the first position. Then you have B, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And for now, we're just gonna stay in this region of the bass. Everything after here um, is really, we would need to study a little more because you have to have a solid technique first before you kind of start moving down here um, as you start kind of walking down. So we'll, we can touch that in a different video. So. To start, um, we're gonna talk about first, half and first position. Um, and we're gonna talk really quick about the hand. So on an upright bass, um, you really only use the first, the second, and the pinky. The third finger really only comes into play once you hit thumb position. That's just because really reaching that, you know, pinky, reaching that pinky for that thumb position, it really isn't, um, it doesn't really give you the best sound unless you're doing harmonics or you know anything like that, which is a lot further along uh, in terms of lessons and all that stuff. But while we're up here, really up, in, up until before you get to that thumb position, uh, we really only use the index finger, the middle finger, and the pinky. Um, the third one really kind of acts as a support for the pinky uh, in, all th in these upper positions. What I mean is, so we'll start in half step with F, so you got F. So a half step from that is gonna be your F sharp. So that is where you use that second finger, the, the, the middle finger. It serves as your, your half step. But then when you reach into that pinky finger right here, that is another half step. Uh, so you got half position, and then your fingers are 
aligned by half steps. So you got half step, half step, half step. And if you walk that down the strings, it's the same thing. All right, so that's, that's half steps. Every note on the bass is moved by half steps uh, in terms of your fingers and how they're placed. Um, and the lower you get down on the bass, the smaller the, the, the spacing gets between your fingers. So your half steps up here are not gonna be the same thing as right here. Notice how my fingers kind of shrink down a little bit. So one of the best ways to practice uh, getting a feel for the bass and getting a feel for the fingers is going through those half steps. Just taking that time, put a metronome on, and just make sure you're getting a nice warm sound out of every single, uh, every single note. And if, and if you find it helpful, if you're still kind of familiarizing yourself with the notes of, of these, uh, of the strings and the notes that you're playing, uh, everything moves up in half steps. So you can start with an open E and then call the name out. E, F, F sharp, G. Hold it out. And then move on to the next string. A, B flat, B, C. Jump down a string. B, E flat, E, F. Jump down another string. G, A flat, A, B flat. That is probably one of the easiest ways to practice it. And you can just keep taking it over and over until you get a nice, solid, warm sound out of the instrument. Now, I will warn you, it's gonna hurt. The upright bass is, uh, is not the easiest instrument to just kind of pick up and start learning without going through some pain. Some pain. Um, you will probably bleed, but it's cool. Um, if you look at my fingers, um, they're actually, I have some calluses and stuff like that that have developed over, you know, a few years of playing. And um, to maintain those calluses, I mean, you have to shed, you have to practice consistently and, you know, gig and all that stuff. So, so you can keep that you know, keep those those nice hard fingers kind of going um, because it. if you take some time away from the instrument or as you're coming into it, it is gonna hurt. Um, your hand's gonna cramp up a little bit, but that's why it's so important to take those preliminary steps into getting a nice warm sound. And then the further you go in, you can do it faster. And then it, every note has to ring. So uh, those are the fingering positions, uh, the fingerings for, for the half and first uh, positions. In the next lesson, we'll go ahead and talk about, uh, kind of dig into scales a little bit, and we'll talk more about what I'm doing with my right hand as I'm pulling uh, to give me a nice uh, warm uh, sound and just really get the best sound possible out of the instrument as I play. All right, so thank you for checking this lesson out. Um, once again, sign up to uh, Patrick, uh, Lynch and Friends Company, music company. Uh, my name is Jose, and I'll see you guys on the next lesson. Thank you.